hear me? Yes? Wonderful. Thank you for coming, everybody, and welcome. My name is Linda Gertie, and I'm the Public Engagement Manager at the David Suzuki Foundation. And I'm Kathleen Mullen. I'm the Executive Director of DOXA Documentary Film Festival. and along with Real Canada and National Canadian Film Day, welcome to this screening and panel discussion of After the Last River. Thank you for coming to this important event. I'll begin by acknowledging that we are gathered this evening on the traditional unceded territory of the Coast Salish people, including the Musqueam, Squamish, and tsleil nations. This acknowledgement at the beginning of our event is a small and important demonstration of our deep recognition and respect for Indigenous peoples on whose territories we are gathered. This event is more than a, uh, one of more than 1,800 screenings of Canadian films taking place today, or that have taken place today, from coast to coast to coast, as well as internationally, as part of National Canadian Film Day. To share just a few examples of what has happened today, in the North, the film Angry Inuk, which pays, portrays the impact of seal hunting protests on Inuit communities, is playing in Iqaluit, and also in Dartmouth, Winnipeg, and Toronto. In the South, a film that tells the story of a Quebecois hero called Louis Sia, l'homme le plus fort du monde, played in Kingston, Ontario. In the East, Breakaway, a Canadian sports comedy, is playing in uh, St. John, Newfoundland. And on the West Coast, a movie called One Week, which is a classic road trip movie featuring Canadian icons like Gord Downey of the Tragically Hip, is playing in Masset, High Boy. So these are only four examples of about 1800, and I hope they give you a sense of the breadth, complexity, and diversity of the stories that will be shared in films across the land today. And this is all occurring in a year that marks the 150th anniversary of the Canadian Confederation. This milestone tends to be framed positively in mainstream Canadian conversation, at least in English. And while there's much that can be said about the remarkable milestones Canada has reached over the past century and a half, it would be remiss of me not to recognize that for many people, the celebra celebratory narrative does not resonate. In the long history of this land, 150 years is in fact an extremely limited period of time. It represents only the years since the occupation of these territories, where Indigenous peoples have lived for millennia. So we're hosting this event in the context and spirit of reconciliation as an invitation to consider the impacts of colonization and to re-envision a Canada that elevates and respects Indigenous peoples historically and in our present and our future. I also would like to thank the following partners and sponsors of National Canadian Film Day. It's CBC, Creative BC, UBC Robson Square, Directors Guild of BC, Point of View Magazine, who have provided a beautiful free copy of their new edition, a salute to Canadian documentary filmmaking with all of you. So hopefully you did pick up the Point of View um, magazine, which is a really great read. I'd also like to... Um, say that it, we also participated, the Doxa Documentary Film Festival, along with the David Suzuki Foundation. So we've been really excited to have this partnership. Um, I think it's a person we have partnered with, with the David Suzuki Foundation, so we're thrilled about it um, and being part of this day. Partnerships like this is what Doc, Doxa Documentary Film Festival is all about. And just a few words to say that our festival is coming up fast and furious. We are opening on May 4th with a fantastic documentary produced by the National Film Board of Canada, The Road Forward, directed by Marie Clements. It is a musical documentary that looks at the history of the native voice, and it's really quite spectacular, and we will be opening at the Vogue. I'm just giving us a plug, because we are starting in a week and a half. <laughs> um, we will have 11 days of documentaries and discussions, and I welcome you to take part at that festival happening in two weeks. Um, we are thrilled to be screening After the Last River by Vicky the Flame. She's right over there. <laughs> <laughs> the film actually world premiered at DOCS 
Casa uh, two years ago, and it won an a really great award at DOXA, um, the Nigel Moore Award for Youth Programming. So we're, we're really thrilled when we were uh, you know, coming together to talk about this partnership around what film we wanted to play. Dorothy Wooden, who is DOXA's Director of Programming, suggested um, after the last river, and then we all kind of put our heads together and made this happen. Um, <coughs> and he really, you know, spearheaded the panelists and, and put, um, put the after show, the after conversation together. So um, it's really been collaborative and, and pretty amazing experience. Uh, the panelists will introduce you uh, to you after the screening. So um, please stay uh, for, for afterwards. Um, but we also have a very special guest here tonight, an, an award-winning journalist and author. So please welcome to the stage, Deputy Mayor Jeff Meggs. Thanks uh, very much for that kind introduction, and uh, welcome to everyone. Thank you for acknowledging that we're gathering on the unceded territories of the Slave to the Squamish and the Muscat First Nations. This is a uh, the project of reconciliation is one that the city of Vancouver has undertaken in a very serious way. It's a very difficult and complicated one, but the acknowledgement is just one part of it. And another part of it, which is relevant to tonight's uh, gathering, is that uh, when we agreed and decided to celebrate uh, Canada 150 as a, as a city, we thought we should acknowledge right in the name that the history of the city goes way back past 150 years ago. So in, in Vancouver, it's Canada 150 plus, and all of our activities we've uh, worked on with our host First Nations, with our, our First Nations that are on, the, that is, on these territories we're working, living, and you'll see during the coming months that it's very much in line with the uh, spirit of the uh, program we're about to see tonight. So I want to thank uh, the Suzuki Foundation and uh, DOXA for putting it together, and as somebody who worked in journalism for a long time and thought briefly of being in uh, documentary filmmaking, I particularly want to thank you because if you think writing uh, is a poorly paid occupation, uh, don't even begin to think about the difficulties attendant on, on building an excellent film, raising the money, spending the, the months and years it can take to pull it all together, collaborating with all those partners through an essay, and then finding an audience. And it's the audience which is the whole point. <laughs> and, it's, and, and I think in documentary filmmaking, one of the hardest things to achieve. So I want to congratulate uh, Victoria and the rest of her team for putting this together and bringing it here because it's only through, I think, documentary film that we can really hear with respect the entire thinking of people who are being impacted by things like the Diamond Mine and also see these different perspectives and experience in a modest way uh, what they're going through and where they live and why it's so important to them that, uh, that they be supported and that their message reach a wider group of people. So. Thanks to the organizers tonight, thanks to the filmmakers. Uh, I'm not here to make a long speech. I hope that you enjoy the film and uh, have a good evening. Okay. Um, so I just will say that we have, there's someone who's been roaming events for National Community Film Day around the city all day, and they said this is the biggest crowd they've seen. So I think that says something about the subject matter and the the moment that we're living in and the importance of this conversation. So thank you all for coming. Um, I just want to say a couple of words about the film, which you probably know a little bit about already. Um, so After the Last River portrays the impacts of environmental and contamination on Attawapiskat First Nation and aims to support conversations about a more just and sustainable Canada. And it's been screening in First Nations communities, colleges, schools, and festivals across the country. Uh, it won Best Canadian Feature at Planet and Focus and the Nigel Moore Award at Docs, as Kathleen said, and has been described by film, film critics and programmers as the most pressing portrait of Canada you will see all year. And we do hope that you'll stay um, afterwards for the, the powerful panel discussion um, that we anticipate. So just a reminder, turn off your phones and enjoy the panel. <laughs> 